Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation, but not just an ordinary logarithmic equation. This is a special one because we have different bases. If you had the same base, you could safely say that whatever we're logging, they're equal to each other. Or if we had bases that are relatable like 2 and 16 or 27 and 81, then we could easily use that property. And that property basically looks like the following. If you have something like log of x with base b is equal to log of y with base b. And we can safely say that under certain conditions like b has to be greater than 0 and different from 1, x and y are both positive, then this would imply that x equals y. But we don't have this, we don't have that case. So this is a very special type of equation. That's why it is awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. As you know, one of my favorite methods of problem solving is, or one of the techniques that I always use is substitution, right? So let's go ahead and set this equal to x, okay? And let me go ahead and erase this. Now we're going to set this equal to x and this means two things. First of all, I can say that log a plus 1 equals x and this implies from definition of logs, obviously that's very important too, 3 to the power x equals a plus 1. And from the second equation I get something like log a plus 8 a different, in a different base, of course, is also equal to x. And from here we get 4 to the power x equals a plus 8. Now, it's not very common, but sometimes it's used to make it easier uh, to solve. We start with one variable, but then we switch over to two variables. Now, why did I turn this equation into a system? Because I couldn't solve it as an equation. I need to turn it into a system. Now, I have two variables, but it's easier to solve because now I can relate them. How? Take a look at this. I have 3 to the power x equals a plus 1 and 4 to the power x equals a plus 8. And as you know, a plus 1 and a plus 8 are related, right? One of them is 7 more than the other. So I can safely say that 4 to the power x, which happens to be a plus 8, is 7 more than a plus 1, which happens to be 3 to the power x. So I can safely say that 4 to the power x equals 3 to the power x plus 7. In other words, if you add 7 to this, you get the other expression. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and put the x's on the same side and write it as an equation this way. 4 to the power x minus 3 to the power x equals 7. I know you at this point already know the answer, right? At least one of the answers. Or maybe you even guessed it at the log uh, level. Uh, it's easy to guess and check and guessing and checking is a problem solving strategy. That's perfectly fine. But we also have to show that either there are no other solutions or there are other solutions we have to find them or maybe there are infinitely many solutions we have to indicate that. So that's what we're going to look at. So here's our equation and you can basically guess and check and I know some of you don't like guess and check but that's a problem solving strategy whether you like it or not. So for example if you replace x with 0 you get 4 to the power 0 minus 3 to the power 0 equals 7. Is that true? That's false. Okay it doesn't work because uh, 1 minus 1 equals 0. If x is equal to 1, then I get 4 to the power 1 minus 3 to the power 1 equals 1. And obviously it's not, well, I should probably say, is it equal to 7? And the answer is no, it's false. And how about x equals 2? And by the way, why am I using integers? Well, it makes sense because if you substitute non-integers like fractions or irrational numbers, then it's going to be hard to evaluate the powers plus their difference uh, may or may not be 7. I don't know, right? That's going to be harder to check. So I started with basic cases. So x equals 2 actually gives me a good hit. 4 to the second power minus 3 to the second power is equal to 16 minus 9, and that is equal to 7. Yay. We got a solution. I say we got a solution because I need to check the other cases. But at least I got one solution. I know that. So x equals 2 is a valid solution. And you can verify that, right? You can just substitute x equals 2. But that doesn't mean a equals 2 because if x is equal to 2, then we can go ahead and substitute x equals 2 here and find the a value. But we're going to take care of that later on. First of all, I want to look at this scenario here. How can I show that there are other solutions or there are no other solutions? How can I analyze this graph? Analyze the keyword. So we're going to look at it from an analytical standpoint. So I'm going to be checking the function f of x equals 4 to the power x minus 3 to the power x. Okay, million dollar question. Is this an increasing function or a decreasing function? And we don't know yet. So what are we going to do? 
we need to look at the derivative. So let's do a little bit of calculus here. I hope you don't mind. Let's go ahead and differentiate this function. And if I do, I'm getting 4 to the power x times ln 4 minus 3 to the power x times ln 3. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this equal to 0. And from here, I want to find the critical point or points. So from here, we get 4 to the power x ln 4 is equal to 3 to the power x times ln 3. So the x value that I find from here is going to be critical value. There's a chance that it might be a maxima or minima. So I can just put the x's on the same side and use a common exponent and write, write the other expression this way. All right. And then we can basically ln both sides. If we do, we'll get rid of the exponent. And we can just isolate x this way. So we're kind of getting a complicated looking expression, but don't worry, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a numerical approximation here, and you can do the same thing. It's like ln3, ln, ln3 divided by ln4, and we have to ln that again. So now this x can be moved here, and I want to write this ln4 over 3 as ln4 minus ln3 using the you know, properties of logarithms, because that's going to make, in my opinion, the calculations easier. So here I'd like to isolate x. And it should look like the following. Notice that I'm still after the x value. I'm going to get to a later. Okay, great. So that's the x value that I found by setting the derivative equal to 0. And if the second derivative also satisfies the conditions, and that point is a critical point, so I probably have a maximum or a minimum at this point. And when I show you the graph of this function, you'll notice what's going on. But first I wanted to... Uh, algebraically analyze this function before I show you the picture, okay? Because you don't always have a graph. You don't even have a tool sometimes. It's not available. You have to calculate things. So this value, you know, is approximately negative 0 0.81, but I'm just going to call that x0 in this case to easily refer to it. And after you know other calculations or looking at the graph and other stuff, I can safely say that this function has a minimum at this point. Now, why is that happening? Because for x greater than x0, then I find that f of x is increasing. And it makes sense. Why? Because think about it. Like as x increases, like x approaches infinity, right? You're talking about the function 4 to the power x minus 3 to the power x. Obviously, 4 to the power x is going to have uh, larger values compared to 3 to the power x, right? So the difference is going to get larger and larger. That means our values are supposed to go higher as x increases. But where, where is that going to happen? That is my critical point. So this makes sense, right? Okay, and for the other interval, f of x will be decreasing. And since this is a negative value, I can safely say that for all positive x values, my function will definitely be increasing. Okay, make sense? Great. Now, we're going to be looking at the graph, but let me just quickly tell you what this means. If a function is increasing, uh, actually the other way around, if a function is decreasing first and then increasing, then it's supposed to make a minimum point. That's how we can get the minima or maxima. Okay? Make sense? So that's my critical point, which I called x0. Now we're going to be looking at the graph and notice that I found x equals, I found x equals 2 to be a solution. And I'll show you what it means on the graph. Here we go. Okay. Here's the graph of f of x equals 4 to the power x minus 3 to the power x. As you see here, it's pretty much similar to an exponential function, but it just behaves a little differently on different intervals. And the point that I marked here is actually my x0 point, which I gave you approximately as negative 0 0.81, right? So that's a negative value. It's less than zero. So we can safely say that for all positive x values, my function will be increasing, right? Because I know that from x0 to infinity, this function is f of x is increasing, right? Okay. So I already know that. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Well, this is my function and I'm setting it equal to 7. I already got a value of x equals 2. And you can actually see that here on the graph right there. Look at this. This point is... 2 comma 7, which tells you that if f of x or y is equal to 7, then x has to equal 2. And that's the only solution where x is positive because this is an increasing function on the positive interval of x 
and there's no way that this graph will be intersected by this line again. This is my horizontal line, y equals 7, and, and it can only intersect. So I have a function that is constantly increasing, and it can only be intersected at one point. Does that make sense? So I only have one solution on this interval. How about the negatives? You might be thinking maybe there is a solution right there, which is hidden, right? Okay, well, we said that our values are going to be, uh, our function is going to be decreasing on the interval negative infinity to, probably need to change the color here, so on the interval negative infinity to x0, f of x will be decreasing, right? Okay, what's that supposed to mean? Well, it's going to be coming from some point, and then it's going to decrease. At x0, it's going to take a negative x value. At 0, the difference is going to be 0 because it graph goes through 0, 0, and then it's going to increase, right? I mean, after x0, it's going to increase, obviously. So what happens if x approaches negative infinity? Well, you can easily take the limit of this function as x approaches infi negative infinity. And you're going to notice that it's going to approach 0. So our graph is going to approach the x-axis. Uh, x-axis, in other words, is going to be an asymptote for our function. Therefore, there is no way it's going to cross the x-axis anymore and hit y equals 7 anywhere. So this means that x equals 2 is the only solution. But that's not what we're looking for. What is the original problem? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I found out that x equals 2 is the only solution to my equation, which we're given by 4 to the power x minus 3 to the power x equals 2. And you can easily, I'm sorry, it's 7. You can easily check that, right? 16 minus 9 equals 7. Okay, it works, and there's no other solution. We checked that already. Now, what's that supposed to mean in terms of our problem? Let's go ahead and take a look at the original problem, because we always have to back substitute, right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Remember, I set both of these equal to x. Now, I'm saying that x is equal to 2, so I'm going to go ahead and replace x with 2 and see what happens. It doesn't matter which one you use, the first or the second, because it's going to give you the same value. We can safely say that 3 to the second power equals a plus 1. From here, I get a plus 1 equals 9. And finally, we get a equals 8. And that is going to be the only solution to this problem. So I got one solution to this logarithmic equation with different bases. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.